also don't have a viewfinder, so I'm just going sicko mode on this one. Hi, I'm Abby. I have a lot of records, and this is Vinyl Monday. So welcome back, or welcome if this is your first time here. This is the series where I just sit down and talk about the music I love. Um, before we get started with things this week, I just wanted to thank you all so much for being kind and respectful and receptive in the comments of my last episode of Vinyl Monday. That was, of course, Willie and the Poor Boys by Credence Clearwater Revival, where I focus on the song Fortunate Son. Um, I always worry getting political on my channel because I am a 23-year-old woman <laughs> talking about 60s and 70s music and the politics of the time. Um, it's, it's a different perspective for sure. So I just want to thank you all for being okay humans. <laughs> I know, I'm, it feels pathetic thanking you for the bare minimum, but this is the internet. Uh, it has to be done. And I realize today I am just extra to the max. And it's for good cause, because this week we are talking about David Bowie's The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Before I show you the album art, I have to show you another art piece that the Instagram Vinyl Monday viewers saw, and that is these shoes! Um, these are my giant Jeffrey Campbell platforms that I wore for the Instagram Vinyl Monday. Uh, these were my congrats present to myself for starting my website and I never get to wear these, so they're just perfect for a glam rock vinyl Monday. Okay, back to the regularly scheduled programming. Let's take this out of the plastic here, and oh, we have a little extra here that I'm gonna show you a little later. So my copy is a repress from 1980, and this is really special to me because this album and a few others that you're going to be seeing in my vinyl collection update video once I finally get that out. I know I've been talking about it for a really long time, but it's going to get out soon, I promise. Anyway, this album was a gift from one of my amazing subscribers. Thank you, Paul. Very cool. And he sent it along with this little zine. Um, on the 50th anniversary of Ziggy Stardust. There's some cool information in here, so thank you so much, Paul. This is awesome. And now B-Roll Abby gets to show you the cover art. The Ziggy Stardust album art was photographed by Brian Ward, and the art was done by Terry Pastor. Now, what do I mean by this? Um, this photograph was taken in monochrome, and then Terry went in later and recolored it. So it would have this kind of cool, not really a spacey effect, but it almost reminds me of the cover of like an old sci-fi book or the poster for a B-movie. It's, it's really cool. And then on the back, we have the same kind of deal with David Bowie as Ziggy Stardust in all his glory. Now, I apologize in advance for this episode going off the rails a little earlier than usual, but uh, let's talk about the Kanye West theory. Kanye is a chaos Gemini. This album is a chaos Gemini. I'm a chaos Gemini. Let's go! A quick note before I go any further with this, just because I tell you guys about a theory, doesn't mean I actually believe it. I am merely informing you of its existence because this is simply too bonkers to ignore. All right, so there is this wacky theory that surfaced on the internet about 15 years ago that Ziggy Stardust prophesizes the rise and fall of American rapper Kanye West. <laughs> The theory stems from the album art. Right here, of course, we have the K West sign. And this was the sign for a British furrier's storefront. Um, for I had to look up what a furrier was. 
Um, it's apparently a place that sells fur clothing. I wouldn't know anything about that. I've only ever bought fur from a thrift store. <laughs> the title track describes how in the Ziggy Stardust extended cinematic universe, the world would end in five years if the Starman didn't arrive to save us all. It's interesting to note that Kanye West was born I believe four years and 363 days after the release of Ziggy Stardust. My math could be wrong, there will be a subtitle if it is. But Kanye also hasn't died on stage and evaporated into Stardust, so there's that. Uh, judging how I'm handling this theory, uh, you can probably tell I don't believe in it at all. But! My favorite part is that it implies that David Bowie is a prophet. If there's anything I could subscribe to from the Kanye theory, it is that David Bowie is a prophet. <laughs> is it really an episode of Vinyl Monday if I'm not dressed entirely ridiculous and the video doesn't go completely off the rails? <laughs> So the personnel for Ziggy Stardust goes as follows. Of course, you have David Bowie on vocals, as well as guitar and saxophone. Mick Ronson on guitar, as well as piano, and he did the string arrangements too. Trevor Boulder on bass, and Mick Woodmancy on drums. Side note, why are there so many British Micks? I mean, you got Mick J, of course, Mick T, Mick Ronson, this guy. <laughs> The British mix are just six degrees of David Bowie. Special guests include Rick Wakeman on harpsichord and Dana Gillespie on vocals. They both contribute to It Ain't Easy. So David Bowie was the master of the alter ego. Uh, I think of Aladdin Sane and the Thin White Duke and, of course, his most famous Ziggy Stardust. Ziggy is a bisexual androgynous rock star from space sent to Earth to save humankind from the apocalypse. Ziggy wins the heart of his fans, but suffers from a fall from grace after going on a fame-slash-drug-induced ego trip. The storyline ends with Ziggy dying on stage, and I guess his body, like, evaporates or something? And the character of Ziggy was inspired by several people, um, most closely by a performer named Vince Taylor. Bowie met Taylor after he'd suffered a similar breakdown to Ziggy's, and he believed he was an alien slash god. Yeah, you really can't make this stuff up. And the Ziggy attitude and persona was inspired by the glam rock guys of the time, namely Iggy Pop of the Stooges. I love the Stooges. So production on Ziggy Stardust went really fast. It was recorded at Trident Studios from the end of 1971 into early 1972. The first song recorded was It Ain't Easy, which is a Ron Davies cover, and this track was actually meant to go on Bowie's previous release, Hunky Dory, but it was cut from the final track listing. A Chuck Berry cover was shopped around to go on Ziggy as well, but it didn't make it on either. And this I found really interesting. Um, a re-recorded version of the Superman from The Man Who Sold the World was also considered for Ziggy. I believe this made it as far as the demo stage. All of the material for this record came together really quickly, um, but when the track listing was presented to RCA, uh, an exec complained that there wasn't a single on it. So Bowie and company headed back into the studio, recorded Starman, and that was the final track recorded for Ziggy Stardust. The track listing goes as follows. The album opens with Five Years, then you have Soul Love, Moon Age Daydream, Starman, and It Ain't Easy. Side 2 opens with Lady Stardust, which was, I believe, inspired by Mark Bolin. Then you have Star, Hang On To Yourself, Ziggy Stardust, Suffragette City, and the record ends with Rock and Roll Suicide. So Starman was the record's single, and this was the song that Bowie performed on his appearance on Top of the Pops. This and the success of Ziggy as a whole 
propels David Bowie into a whole new level of fame. He basically becomes the biggest pop star in the world overnight. And this spawned the Z Stardust tour, which just capitalized even more on this. But this level of success for Bowie came with some negative psychological effects. Uh, Bowie immersed himself in the Ziggy character so much that he started to have trouble differentiating what was Ziggy, what was David Bowie, and what or who was David Jones, the person behind the persona. So Ziggy is a I don't even know how to describe it. It's the the record is a legacy in and of itself. So what do I think? Firstly, I think the string arrangements are gorgeous. Mick Ronson really hit it out of the park. Five Years used to be my least favorite. Um, I couldn't really get into it. I would skip it when it came on. But after studying this record, for this video, I appreciate it a lot more. My brain hurts a lot too, Bowie. <laughs> the guitar solo in Soul Love just shot that song right to the top of my favorites list. And the way the vocal line follows it after, it's, it's just perfection. I love it. Of course, I love Moon Age Daydream. And I also love the Zen Gorilla cover of Moon Age Daydream. If you haven't heard it, you're going to pause this video, go to whatever streaming service you use, you're going to listen to Zen Gorilla Moon Age Daydream, and come back here. I dig Zen Gorilla. And I really dig Marcus Duran. <laughs> so we're like clear of monetization, whatever. I can address Lady Stardust now, right? I'm gonna put a timestamp here, you're gonna open up that song in whatever streaming service you use, and we're gonna listen to this together, okay? David Jones, you dog! Which brings me into my point of the lyrical genius that this record brings with Lady Stardust, and I quote, He was the Naz with God-given ass. God bless David Bowie. And am I allowed to say that rock and roll suicide is an anticlimactic ending? I don't know, I just... I don't like it. The overarching narrative of Ziggy is lopsided. I think it takes way too long to set up Ziggy's downfall. Maybe moving the It Ain't Easy cover behind Lady Stardust or maybe Star would have helped this. I don't know. Bowie was a chameleon and Ziggy by far was a high point of his career, but this album overshadows the other high points of his career. I think of Young Americans, the Berlin Trilogy, ooh, his album from the 2000s, Reality, though that literally might just be my friends and I who like that one. Looking for water, looking for water. Black Star and the stroke of genius that was Life on Mars. I think Life on Mars is one of the 15 best songs ever recorded. The subject matter of Ziggy Stardust will stay relevant as long as there's rock and roll. It's happened to every rock star, it's still happening to rock stars, and it's gonna keep happening to rock stars. Hell, it even happened to Ziggy himself. I believe that Bowie accidentally manifested how the 70s would go for him through this record. You know, I might even Ziggy myself someday. Maybe I'm an intergalactic music reviewer sent from Mars to save you all from the pretentious fucks of the YouTube vinyl community. Who knows? Not you. I guess what I'm trying to say is Ziggy's inevitability makes it a classic. So my personal favorites are Five Years, Soul Love, Moon Age Daydream, Lady Stardust, and Suffragette City. And that's it! That's my video! You guys should leave a comment telling me what you think 
of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars in my comments. I love hearing what you guys have to say about the music that I love. I have such great memories with Bowie's music. Two of my best friends in the whole world are Bowie super fans, and they're the ones who got me into his music on some long, long drives. So Michael, Matthew, if you're watching this, thank you so much. <laughs> if you guys like what I do here, you should like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post Vinyl Mondays every Monday morning at 11 a.m. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Profit! Profit! He prophesied! <laughs>